So many homeschoolers love Charlotte Mason co-ops. Here's why. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. More and more, we are hearing from homeschoolers who are excited about Charlotte Mason co-ops. Why all the excitement? Well, let's talk with someone who has been part of a Charlotte Mason co-op for many years, Laura Pitney. Laura, it's good to have you with us again. Well, thank you for having me. Now, you've been part of a Charlotte Mason co-op for how long? Do you even know? Well, it's pretty <laughs> much been the whole time we've I've had children or, you know, been, whether it was a church group or co-op group, so maybe about 15 years or so, give or take a little bit. So, yeah, <laughs> so you've seen a lot about it. What What's all the excitement about? What do you love about your Charlotte Mason co-op to keep you involved in it this long? Yeah, well, there's a few things that come to mind, and one of uh, the first things, just right, that I, th- I would want to say first is just sharing the load. I mean, homeschooling um, is a beautiful thing, but it's also challenging. And so to have other like-minded families and moms that are on that same journey um, has really been encouraging, especially during the times where I'm just like, can I quit? Can I just walk away? Yeah, where do I resign? <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. So just having that, um, just that group of families that are um focused on their families and their home education, I just think really keeps me going. So that would be one component, um, just sharing um, with the other like-minded moms and families. Um, I think over the years, I've seen the Lord use that in my life because, you know, we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And so during the different seasons that I've been with, you know, our family and with raising the children, the times where I really need the help the help has been provided, and that's um, been a way that I have been ministered to through the co-op. And then there's times in my life where it's been an opportunity where I can minister to those families that where the roles have been reversed. So there's just that that genuine aspect of community that um, has has just been a beautiful thing in our family, for sure. Um, I love it when. There's moms that are passionate about a certain topic or subject, um, and they bring that to the co-op, and my children get to experience that passion and that love of whatever the topic is. Um, And that's something that I wouldn't necessarily have maybe about yeah you might be passionate yeah. about other subjects right. and right. yeah can can you right. give an example of sure. the time when that happened i mean <laughs> well we have one mom that really loves science mm-hmm. and nature study and she just has a genuine heart to give the children that love of learning um in that si- in the topic of science and so I do not like science. It's not my happy place. And so the bias that I may have towards snakes, for instance. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> you have a bias towards yes, snakes. I do not like them. That's why you won't touch all. the pictures of snakes in correct, books. Yeah, correct. I've seen I, that. I have thrown books at my children when a snake has <laughs> showed up on the page. You turn the page on. Yeah, yes, yes, for I've sure. So I've been inspired to really try hard to not let the things I'm uncomfortable with transfer over to my children. And so to have moms that set that good example of just teaching with a passion and um, just those characteristics of helping your children want to be lifelong learners has inspired me to be a lifelong learner. So um, just that example that set before me through these other moms and, and families has helped me turn the corner into my own home and try better and be inspired to at least ask questions and help point them in the right direction for things that maybe I don't necessarily want to pursue, like snakes. Does that make sense? Yeah, it helps you at least grow Yes, in that aspect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, having other moms teach things that you don't necessarily enjoy, right? let's say, <laughs> um, I could see that that could go one of two ways. Um, one way could be, well, that gives me an excuse not to even touch that subject which is very tempting (laughs) yeah I can see how it could be but what's the better alternative to that it seems like you could be inspired Mm -hmm. by seeing these other moms and you could even gain ideas from them and realize oh well that's not as difficult as I thought it was talk a little bit about that yeah I mean I definitely think there's seasons of life where it's a blessing just to have somebody like in the co-op setting teach your 
your children and sometimes I know I have just needed that like just because we've been in survival mode so I say that that it shouldn't be our default but it it can be a blessing depending on the season of life you're in if that makes sense yeah it does um I think that's part of why co-op's so important is you're all helping each other out and that may just be educationally or academically, but it also may just be an emotional state you're in Mm -hmm. where you just need a little bit of help and not feel guilty about it. Um, But then you have the place where, you know, you may have some insecurities or you may feel inadequate. And so you're seeing these, these moms and teachers teach well, and you could be discouraged and just say, you know, wow, they're really great. I'm never going to live up to that. But I don't think that's the right heart attitude. And I don't think that's the right example to set for our children. So when we see these experienced moms, these passionate moms teaching, we should be inspired. We should be encouraged to try to learn and to try to implement what we can at home because that's a really good example for our children. Um, I think that um, there's a component of that to where um, we're always learning and growing. And I think that's really important for our children to see that we don't know it all (laughs) and we never will. And I'm sure they already know that. I think they might, (laughs) but you know, not to, that you're not content in that state. Yes. Yes. And you know, there's things that, you know, we should try and try to do better. And we might find that we like things that we didn't know we liked before. And again, that's one thing that we want our children to learn, yes. you know, and that's why we give them such a, a wide variety and these, this feast of ideas is because we don't know what will resonate. And, you know, even for us um, as the, the teachers and the moms, you know, we should be encouraged to try too, <laughs> and yeah. not just settle. Well, I remember so. you were talking about um, one of the recent terms at your mm-hmm. co-op, you did a family handcraft yep. time, yep. which was... I'm not going to stand up and teach everybody (laughs) handcrafts. I want each family to bring their own handcraft, and we're just going to allot this time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's brilliant because it doesn't give the mom an easy out. Right. It... But yet there's the support there. Right. There's that gentle um, leaning Mm -hmm. into it to try something, yeah. go ahead and bring it. Right. And if you don't bring something, you know, there's that accountability yeah. <laughs> factor. You know, you don't bring something, you're going to stand out because yeah. you're yeah. not, you're the only one that doesn't have anything. Right. I, th- I think that that was really beautiful because you have moms that basically some of them could just bring a pen and paper and they just practice drawing with their child, maybe something that they saw in the room. It was super simple, just learning that skill of even just holding the pencil right and mm. perspective. So, it, And then I had moms that were like embroidering these pillowcases that were immaculate, you know. So the skill level, you weren't boxed in. But like you're saying, that time allotment was really encouraging and one thing I really saw in that that handicraft community was moms that saw projects and wanted to learn about the projects could ask questions from somebody that had already learned some skill. I mean, they may not been, have been a professional or an expert, but, you know, we all have different levels and abilities. So even just being able to ask somebody, hey, how did you thread your needle or how did you do that slip knot or, you know, It was just a beautiful thing to start seeing a community being built around the individual projects that the families brought. And there was no judging. There was no critiquing. And I loved seeing the kids give that focused attention and see them, you know, ask questions and even build relationships with their mom or whoever they were there with the co-op with. I mean, to me, that's the heart of it is... You're, you're definitely enriching your mind with all the academics and the things, but like that's that real investment in the heart when you're mm-hmm. eye to eye and asking questions or looking at a snake in a book. You know, it's like that's the From a heart. distance. Yes, from a distance, <laughs> or big distance. You know, I mean, to me, that's the heart of why the co-op is so important is um, we can just get in this rut of being in our daily homeschool world. And so to have that change of pace into that co-op um, just gives you a little bit of life. And then you have the community and the relationships and um, just all those, the components that just pour back into the life of your homeschool when you're at home. It's just, it's neat to see that connection of how they just intertwine together. It seems like it would also infuse your child with um, 
I guess confidence yeah. is the word that comes to mind. What I'm thinking of is homeschooling is becoming more and more accepted sure. in, in society at large. When you say, I'm a homeschooler, they don't look at you like you have two <laughs> heads anymore, like they used to. Right. But we're also doing a specific type of homeschooling right. with Charlotte Mason. And so it's, even if you know other homeschoolers, if they're not doing narration, they're right. not doing nature study notebooks, they're not doing picture study, they're not doing poetry, your child might get this feeling like we're really odd here and we're the only ones right. who, why is mom making right. us do this? And the mom may feel like that too. <laughs> that could be, yes, yeah. yeah. But if you can be in this community mm -hmm. of other Charlotte Mason homeschoolers, right. it seems like that would yeah. give enthusiasm mm -hmm. even when you're home doing your own thing, yeah. that yeah. we're not the only ones doing this. Right. I agree. And I've seen that over the years to where like you said, just the confidence. And even for the children, to they're motivated at, at the co-op to do certain things at home. And then they're motivated at home because maybe they want to share it with their friends or their teachers at co-op. So mm. there's just this beautiful thread that ties them both together. And both are very life-giving. I can see why mm -hmm. people are excited yeah. about Charlotte Mason co-ops. Thanks for sharing about your experience. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe. We'll see you next time.